Hello. Here we are at the end of chapter one. We're going to look at the appendix, and the appendix covers the math and the graph analysis that we need to use in this class to be successful. And economics is quite graphical in nature. We have lots of graphs. And we have two kinds of graphs we're going to cover in this class. One is what is known as informational graphs. And these just present information. Here's an example. What we have here is uh, the unemployment rate. And this comes from a site called FRED. That's the Federal Reserve Economic Data. And that comes from one of the Federal Reserve Banks. This one is the St. Louis Federal Reserve Bank. And they have this FRED data source where anyone can go in and they can get any kind of economic data pretty much and come out with a nice graph if they want to use a graph for some analysis or for some presentation. This one he uses the unemployment rate. This is the percent of the labor force that is officially counted as unemployed. And we'll talk more about this in Chapter 5 and then in much more detail in Chapter 7. This is a time series data that just presents information. There's no analytical reasoning going on here. There's no cause and effect. We're simply looking at how the unemployment rate varies over time. So here we have going back to 1980, 85, 1990, up to 2020. And when the unemployment rate is 5% there, 7.5% there, 10%, 12.5%. And the shaded areas are recessions, and that's when things are not going too well in the economy. And you see the latest one right here is the recession caused by the coronavirus shutdown. The, here's the Great Recession of the uh, about 2008, 2009. You see unemployment got up to about 10% there. Going back to early 1980s, again 10%, and we've surpassed that. Uh, in April of this year, 2020, Unemployment rate hit 14.7 percent, and it's come down a bit since then. The latest number for uh, July 2020 is 10.2 percent, still very high. Uh, the highest rate we ever had was 25 percent uh, during the Great Depression. Now, the kind of graphs which we're going to use for most of our analysis are analytical graphs, and these show how one variable relates to another variable. We have two variables, your x and y variable. You have your x variable on the x-axis. That's a horizontal axis. And then we have the y variable on the y-axis. That would be the vertical line uh, against which this variable is plotted. And typically, you see your mathematical relationships written this way, where this says y is equal to f of x, y is a function of x, or it means that y depends on x. So if x goes up, for example, y may go up. So if x goes up, that can cause y to go up. And this is cause and effect. It's x affecting y. That's why x here, uh, uh, x that affects y, we call y the dependent variable, because y depends on x. And x is the independent variable, because in the way the model is set up, x does not depend on anything. And likewise, with the positive relationship, if x goes down, that would cause y to go down. So a positive relationship, also known as a direct relationship, you have the variables, the two variables move in the same direction. Then a negative relationship, if x goes up, that also is going to affect y. But this time it's going to drive y down. And then if x goes down, that's going to cause y to go up. And in our textbooks, we have lots of economic relationships, some positive, some negative. Now, we will have some functions in this class, but we're going to use the simplest type of functions, which are linear functions. And what's nice about linear functions is that the way that x affects y never changes. So x has a constant effect on y. If x goes up by 1 each time, it has the same impact on y each time. Typically, you see it written this way, y is equal to mx plus b, where your two variables are y and x. And then you have these two other numbers, your m and your b. Your m is your slope, because that's tied to the x. And that tells us what happens to x. I'm sorry, that tells us what happens to y if x uh, changes, if x goes up by 1 or goes down by 1. And that would be the change in the y variable over the change in the x variable. And then b, the y-intercept, doesn't tell us anything about x and y. It simply tells us if x is nothing, what, what, what uh, y is going to be. If x is 0, then m times 0 is 0. And all we have is y equal to b. So b tells us a starting point. It tells us the value of y when x is 0. 
So an example here would be say we want to look at the uh, relationship between spending money on ads, on radio ads, and how that affects the sales of a small business. And so we get out my ruler. This way. And so we're going to go up from 5,000. So it'll be 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. 35, 40, 45, 50. And down here we have our ads. So that would be 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. So this is 5,000, 10,000, and so on. to 50,000. This would be our sales per week and down here we have our ads and that would be, this is zero, and that would be 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. These are all dollars. Dollars up here and dollars down there. And so we can plot the data. So when we have zero money on ads, that tells us we're going to have $10,000 in sales. That's our B, our y-intercept. That tells us our sales if we have no money spent on ads. So we can anticipate just having some customers come in without any uh, advertising on radio. And then if we have uh, one ad per week, say $1,000 for that ad, we can increase our sales to here, $15,000. And then $2,000 in ads, another uh, $1,000, we have $20,000. $3,000 will give us $25,000 in sales, and then $4,000 will give us $30,000 in sales. And if I do a decent job, I should get a nice line out of that. And I'll say this is the radio line because it tells us the sales we get from advertising on radio. And so from this data here, we can get an equation for this line. And this would be, again, y is equal to mx plus b. Well, we have the y-intercept. It's right there. It's 10,000. And the question is, what is our slope, our m? Well, uh, it's your change in y variable over the change in the x variable. Right there. And so take two points, say these two points. If we increase our ad by $1,000, sales go from 15 to 20,000. So that'll be 5,000 over 1,000. That is five. So 5,000 over 1,000 is a change y, we're changing x is five, and that's a slope. And so you put the five right there, times it by x, and that's our equation for this line that every time we uh, increase uh, our money on ads by $1,000, we increase sales by 5000 Now another class, or sorry, another class, an, another uh, type of advertising could be on YouTube down here. So if I put this data up here, so we have $10,000 again if we have no ads, makes sense. And then if we have one ad a week for $1,000 on YouTube, we get $20,000 in sales. That would be up there. And then uh, two ads, we have $30,000 in sales right there. Three ads give us 40,000. And then four ads give us $50,000 in sales. So this line is going to be steeper. Missed my points there. Make my points a little larger. Here. And this is for YouTube. What's the equation for YouTube? Well, it starts at 10,000 also, but every time we increase our ads by $1,000, we increase our sales by 10,000. That'd be 10,000 over 1,000, that'd be 10. So the slope here 
would be 10, and the equation would be y, our sales, equal to 10x plus the same $10,000. for the y-intercept. You can see that the steeper the line, the more the impact the x variable has on the y variable. So a much steeper line means that this variable is affecting the y variable much more each time. A flatter line means that there's less of an effect from the x variable on the y variable. And in fact, if the line was flat like that, that would be equation y is equal to $10,000. There's no slope because every time you increase your ads by $1,000, nothing happens to your sales. In this case, there would be no relationship between ads and sales. And it looks like I've gone over 10 minutes, and so I'll stop there, and I'll break up this lecture into two parts.